Now, in our previous video, we reviewed various types of diagrams that we could use to visualize how we're going to compute the probability of two things happening at the same time. The probability that I both rolled a six and drew a six from this deck. And what we did from those visuals is we were able to see why in that particular circumstance, we would want to multiply the individual probabilities of each event in order to get the total probability. Now, the reason that that works is because these events are what are called independent events in probability. And in essence, what that means is that the two events don't have any influence on one another. The deck of cards doesn't know that I've rolled the die and rolling any particular value on the die doesn't change the probability of events that are happening when I draw the card from the deck. And it's only when events are independent in probability that we take those individual probabilities and multiply them together in order to get the combined probability of both things happening. Now, in reality, the notion of independent events is very, very difficult. And it's often hard for mathematicians to determine whether or not events are independent. And there's actually a more formal definition than what I provided here for you on what it means for events to be independent. And there's actually a beautiful blog post that I just came across, which I put the link to down here in the slides. And one of these visuals that's available on the website, it shows just how difficult it is for events at random to be independent. However, the example that I gave you in the previous set of slides really and truly is an example of independent events. And more importantly, we need to be aware of the fact that independent events are difficult. It kind of serves as a cautionary tale, but we are going to assume that we have independent events when we're working with our logistical regression model. So let's recall that when we have a review, we have a mechanism for scoring that review, which was given by this function s of x. And once we had that score, we translated the score into a probability by plugging that score into the sigmoid function. And that gave us this value right here for the probability that the review x is a positive review. So this is the probability of the review x being positive. In general, if we have two different reviews, x1 and x2, we're going to consider the probability that one of them is positive and the probability that another one of them is positive to be independent events. And here's why. We're thinking about reviews as being products, reviews of products on some sort of website like Amazon, where we have customers all over the world who are purchasing these products for different reasons and coming to their own conclusions about whether or not they like them and then are just writing a review. So we're assuming that if a person in Kenosha, Wisconsin buys something and somebody across the pond in London buys something, that these two people don't know one another, they didn't interact with one another, and they didn't influence the other's opinion on whether or not they thought that this was a good product. And so we will think in that sense that these two reviews had nothing to do with one another and they didn't influence the probability of the other person writing a positive review and therefore these events are independent. And once we do that, we're going to make a formal definition of a function called the likelihood function. And it's got a slightly confusing definition, so I want to go over it a little bit before this video ends. But what we're going to do is take our training data and split it into positive reviews, into a set I've called P, and I've assumed that I have N positive reviews. We're also going to take a look at our negative reviews. I've assumed that we have M negative reviews. And we're going to define the likelihood function, in essence, to be a long multiplication of the individual probabilities of these events matching their observation as either positive or negative. So the easiest part of this function to understand is the first part, where we've taken all the probabilities that are positive each review has its own score. We can then compute the probability that that review is a good review. Because it is actually a good review, we would expect this number to be rather high in this range from zero to one. We're gonna multiply them all together because each positive review is thought of as being independent from each other positive review. 
and that's the first part of this formula. But then we also have to deal with the negative observations. And because the review is a negative observation, any scoring function that does a good job should give it a relatively low probability of being positive. But that is a good thing. And so what we want to do is take the probability that that review is a good review, which should be a relatively small number on this scale from zero to one, and we wanna look at its complement because that's the probability that the review matches its actual tag, and that should be high. So over here, things work as you would hope that they would. And over here, things are just a little bit of the opposite of what they ought to be because they're negative reviews. And again, we've put them all together with the big product because each negative review is independent from one another and the positive and negative reviews are all independent of one another. So we create this likelihood function, which is really measuring how well our scoring function matches both the positive reviews and the negative reviews.